by everyone. Today we are going through some problems which can be solved using the principles of uh, inclusion and exclusion. We start with uh, accounting problem in which we count the number of arrangements. So this question, in how many ways can there be x, 3x, 3y and 3z can be arranged so that uh, no consecutive triplets of the same letter appears. That means we are looking for the arrangements in which there is no uh, consecutive arrangements of triplets that is like x, 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 y, y, y and uh, is said is said is said y y y and is said is said is said so in total we have nine letters out of which three are x's and uh, three are y's and three are is sets so in total all this if you consider all the arrangements which we can done using all these uh, nine letters it is given by uh, nine factorial divided by Nine letters can be arranged in nine different ways, uh, but since we have three x which are indistinguishable divided by three factorial, and since we have three y's, it is divided by three factorial, and uh, due to the presence of three sets which are indistinguishable, we have a three factorial. That means the total number of arrangements is nine factorial divided by three factorial, the all raised uh, three. So this is the total number of arrangements. Now let us uh, define three conditions. C1, uh, which uh, states that the three x are, are occurred uh, as a unit, or x x x uh, is in the string. And another condition C2, which means the Triplet y y y is in the uh, string, and C3 is a condition that is it is it is it is in the string. Now we have to count the number of uh, arrangements in which we have three uh, x together. So to count that, we consider all the x x x this as a unit and we have uh, the remaining letters y y y is set is set is set now since x x x is a unit uh, we have total 6 plus 1 7 unit uh, so that can be arranged in 7 factorial and uh, since uh, there are indistinguishable items Due to this y y y, we have a 3 factorial, and uh, due to this uh, is set is set is set, we have another 3 factorial, so it is 3 factorial square. And uh, this is equal to the number of ways uh, we can arrange, uh, or we the number of arrangements in which uh, we have y y y uh, as a unit, so it is equal to the number of. Um, strings in which is set is set is, set is uh, present as a uh, unit. So they are all equal to 7 factorial divided by 3 factorial the square. Now so that is n c1, n c2 and n c3. Now if we look at n c1, c2, how we can count it? So to count n c1, c2, C1, C2 means uh, x, x, x is present in the string and y, y, y is present in the string. So, we consider x, x, x as a unit and y, y, y is uh, another unit. So, it is uh, unit 1, this is another second unit and uh, remaining we have 3 letters. So, in total we have uh, 5 uh, letters, so it is 5 factorial and since the three sets are indistinguishable. We have uh, divided by three factor, so it is five factorial by uh, three factorial, and this is equal to n c1 c3 and n c2 c3. All these are the same. And now, what about the number of 
arrangements in which we have the three conditions C1, C2 and C3 are satisfied. And this is equal to uh, the arrangements in which x, x, x occurs as a unit, y, y, y occurs as a unit and z, 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 z occurs as a third unit. And so here we have only three uh, different units and that can be arranged in uh, three factorial uh, different ways. So now we can use the principle of inclusion and exclusion uh, to find out the number of uh, arrangements in which the condition C1, C2 and C3 is not satisfied and that is equal to the total number of arrangements minus uh, the sum of arrangements in which uh, the condition 1 or the one of the condition is satisfied that is nc1 uh, so it is like this um, n minus nc1 plus nc2 plus nc3 then plus uh, we count the number of items in which two conditions are satisfied that is nc1 c2 plus n c1 c3 plus n c2 c3 then again minus n c1 c2 c3 and in our case it is equal to 9 factorial divided by 3 factorial the all cube minus all these trends, uh, three times are same. So it is three times seven factorial divided by three factorial the square plus again these three ten, uh, times are the same. So it is three times uh, five factorial divided by three factorial in minus uh, the number of case in which all these are uh, these three conditions are satisfied is uh, three factorial. So this is the ways in which we can arrange the letters x, 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 y, y, y and z, 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 z in such a way that no uh, three symbols, uh, no consecutive triplets of the same letters appear. So we have to simplify it and uh, that will give the required number of cases in which we have no consecutive x, 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 y, y, y and z, z, z. z. So that is how we use the principle of inclusion and uh, exclusion. So the second case, second question, determine the number of integer solutions of the equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to 19, where this uh, xi's are positive, xi is uh, 0 less than or equal to xi which means x i greater or equal to 0 which is means it is positive for all values of i. So we are looking for the number of integer solutions of uh, x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4. So uh, I think it is better to give us a formula. The number of solutions of an equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 in general x1 plus x2 plus etc xn is equal to r is uh, same as the number of uh, selection of r items from n items with uh, repetition that is the num uh, required number of solutions integer solutions positive integer solutions is equal to n plus r uh, minus 1 uh, c r so like this n plus r minus 1 c r so that's a num uh, required number of uh, integer solutions for this particular uh, equation. And now we are looking for the this particular case in which um, we have x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to 19. So here um, n is equal to 4 and r is equal to uh, 19. So the total uh, positive integer uh, solutions is uh, 19 plus okay it's better to write uh, 4 plus 
uh, for variables. So it is C 4 plus 19 minus 1 uh, C 19. So it is uh, C 23 19. This is the ways in which we can arrange or we can the, uh, have the solution, integer solutions for a uh, equation of the form x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to uh, 90. So what we use here is the uh, number of um, arrangements with uh, repetition. And now uh, to have the number of um, to have the number of um, solutions which satisfy the condition 0 less than or equal to xi less than or equal to 8 0 less than or equal to xi less than 8 for all values of i or i is equal to 1 to uh, 4 that means x1 takes a value between 0 and 8 x2 takes a value in between 0 and 8 and uh, x3 takes a value in between 0 and 8. So here I am going to define a condition that um, uh, ci which stands for xi is uh, greater than 8. xi is uh, greater than or equal to uh, 8. So C1 is x1 greater than or equal to 8, C2 is x2 greater than or equal to 8, and C3 x3 is greater than or equal to 8, and uh, uh, C4, the condition C4 means x4 is greater than or equal to 8. Now, uh, to find number of uh, solutions in which the condition C1 is satisfied. So here it is the number of uh, conditions in which uh, the total number of uh, integer solutions of the given equation. And out of which, how many, uh, in how many solutions we have uh, x1 uh, have a value which is greater than or equal to 8. So this is nothing but uh, if uh, we replace x1 with uh, some x1 uh, plus 8, so 8 is a guaranteed uh, value since xi is greater than or equal to 8, 8 is guaranteed and it is more than 8. So xi, x1 can take values from 0 to some 19 minus 8. And uh, this x2 can vary uh, from 0 to 19 x3 can vary from 0 to 19 and x4 can vary from 0 to 19 but actually the variation from 0 to 19 is not uh, possible because there is a guaranteed 8 here and this is equal to 19. So the number of uh, solution which satisfies C1 is equal to the number of solu integer solutions of the equation x1 plus 8 plus uh, x2 plus x3 plus x4 and that is equal to the, the number of uh, solution of x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 is equal to 11 and that is given by using the same uh, logic it is given by c uh, 4 plus 11 15 15 minus 1 uh, 14 c 14 11. And this is the same case with uh, C2, NC2, and NC3, and uh, NC4. All these are uh, similar conditions, similar conditions, and therefore the count is the same for all the cases. And uh, what if we consider NC1, C2? C1, C2. That can happen 
when we have uh, look we are counting the number of uh, solutions of the number of uh, integer solutions of uh, we here two integers or two solutions x1 and x2 say x1 and x2 are greater than 8 so that it's equal to uh, the integer solutions of x1 plus x2 plus x3 uh, x3 plus uh, x4 plus 16 is equal to 19 and that is equal to if we arrange these terms it is uh, equal to 19 minus 16 that is 3 and that number is uh, equal equal to uh, c uh, here it is 4 plus 3 minus 1 4 plus 3 minus 1 4 plus 3 4 plus 3 minus 1 is 6 6 6 uh, c uh, 3 now uh, if we look at the number of uh, solutions for which c1 c2 c3 is satisfied three variables are uh, greater than 8 that is uh, the number of solutions of the equation in which three equations are greater than 8 and if three unknowns or x y x1 x2 x3 say for example if x1 x2 x3 are greater than 8 then uh, the sum x1 plus x2 plus x3 is greater than uh, 8 into 3 that is 24 and uh, it cannot be a solution of the set of equations so nc1 c2 c3 equal to 0 and in a similar way nc1 c2 c3 c4 uh, is equal to 0 there cannot be any solution which uh, in which all the variables are greater than 8 so nc1 c2 c3 c4 is equal to 0 and uh, nc1 c2 c3 is equal to 0 now if you count the number of uh, uh, solutions here it is uh, nc1 means the number of solution in which uh, x1 is greater than 8 and if we consider uh, similar occurrences or similar solutions in which say x2 is greater than 8 the uh, so number of solutions in which x3 is greater than 8 and so on we have we can have uh, four different solution or for c1 different solutions and uh, for c1 into c14 uh, 11 is the uh, total number of solutions in which condition ci is satisfied now if you look at the conditions in which two conditions are satisfied then that two conditions can be uh, selected in for c2 uh, different ways and uh, for C2 different ways in in such a way that the order is not material that means C1 C2 is satisfied and C2 C1 is satisfied uh, is the same for C2 into uh, 6 C3 that's the uh, cases in which um, two conditions are satisfied and um, the number of cases in which three conditions are satisfied and four conditions are satisfied are equal to zero now uh, if all xi's are less than or equal to less than eight which means we are looking for the number of cases in which all the conditions are not satisfied so it is c1 c2 c3 c4 uh, bar all the conditions are not satisfied and that's equal to um, total number of uh, solutions minus uh, nc1 plus nc2 plus nc3 plus nc4 that is uh, 4c1 into 14c11 uh, minus uh, 4c4c2 into 6c3 um, then um, plus uh, 0 minus 0 so that's equal to that's the required solution and that can be uh, written as 
is equal to n. n is the uh, total number of solution for the given equation that is uh, 23C19 uh, minus 4, C1 is 4, 4 into 14C11 plus, so this alternatively plus and minus, so it is plus, this is minus, this is first one is negative, second positive, negative, so it is negative, then this is positive. Uh, for C2, for C2 uh, into 6C3, this will give the uh, required uh, solution. So, this is the number of uh, integer solutions of the given equation for which um, the value of xi is less than 8 for all i. Now, uh, let us have another uh, example, another question. We have a non empty set A which contains 7 uh, integers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. How many 1 to 1 functions uh, from A to A uh, have at least one fixed point? Have at least one fixed point. So we are looking for the number of arrangements in which we have at least one fixed point. Uh, there can be one fixed point. A point is said to be fixed point if um, f of x say x naught is equal to x naught then it is said to be a fixed point so in this particular case if you consider the identity map then 1 goes to 1 2 goes to 2 3 goes to 3 and um, for a identity map all the points are fixed points and if you have a map for which f of 1 is equal to 1 then 1 is a fixed point. So that is the concept of uh, fixed points. Then we are looking for the number of uh, 1 to 1 maps which have at least one fixed point. So for that, uh, the, our counting process is like this. Uh, okay, anyhow, if you are looking for the number of cases in which we have no fixed points, which means all elements goes to some other elements. One go, one may go to two, two may go to three, three goes to four, four goes to five, so five goes to six, and so on. In some uh, way, uh, all the elements are arranged in such a way that nothing goes to in its uh, natural position. That's the term which we use. Goes into its natural position. First element is not going to the uh, first position. It can go any. Uh, other positions. So, this is how this happened. Same is happened uh, to all other uh, integers. So, the number of such uh, arrangements is uh, usually denoted by uh, derangements, and uh, the number of d arrangements uh, in n letters or n symbols is denoted by d10 or d10, small d10. And uh, in 10 letters, it is denoted by d10. And if n letters, it is uh, denoted by uh, dn, d suffix n, capital N or small n. And this is uh, given by a simple formula, uh, n factorial into um, summation uh, 1 minus 1 raised the k by k factorial where k varies from uh, 0 to n. So that is the dearrangements or uh, number of cases in which no letter or no uh, letter is going into its natural position. 1 is not going into 1, 2 is not going into 2, 3 is not going into 3 and so on. So this is the number of d arrangements n factorial into sigma k is equal to 0 to n minus 1 raised to k by k factorial. So the logic behind this uh, formula is very simple and we can illustrate that using this uh, seven uh, symbols. So if you count the number of arrangements 
in which uh, one goes to one and uh, uh, all other may or may not go to any other positions one goes to one that can happen in n minus 1 or uh, okay, let us for the time being let us ignore this particular problem let us consider n symbols n symbols and uh, this um, n symbols can be arranged in uh, total n factorial uh, ways and now consider out of it this n factorial ways uh, say if you look at the first symbol and if you count the number of ways in which uh, first symbol goes into the first position uh, that let the condition be c1 or let us define a general condition ci is the condition that the first ith symbol goes to the ith position itself and all the other positions can take any uh, position from uh, 1 to uh, n. So, one position is fixed and that can be done in uh, n minus 1 factorial ways. So, the remaining n minus 1 symbols can go to any other uh, places in n minus 1 uh, factorial ways and we can choose that uh, ith position from 1 to n and that can uh, be done in n ways or n c1 ways. So, that is what we uh, what happens or uh, the number of cases in which uh, now I use notation n c i number of cases in which one condition is satisfied. Now, what if we count the number of uh, uh, arrangements in which uh, C i and C j is uh, satisfied. So, that means two uh, positions are fixed. i goes to i and j goes to j. For example, 1 is mapped to 1 and 2 is mapped to uh, 2. And uh, the remaining n minus 2 positions can be arranged in between them in any, uh, any order and these two positions can be chosen in n c 2 ways. And this uh, can be uh, generalized. So, if we consider three uh, conditions c 1, c 2, c 3 then we can arrange, uh, we can have n c 3 into n minus 3 uh, factorial different uh, arrangements and so on the last term the number of arrangements in which um, all uh, letters or symbols going into its natural uh, positions uh, is um, given by n c n into n minus n uh, factorial is equal to 1 into uh, n minus 1 is 0, 0 factorial that is equal to 1. Uh, and obviously this n c 1 c 2 c 3 all symbols goes into its natural position that can be that can happen only in uh, one way in an in our particular example it is the identity map is. And now if you count uh, the number of uh, arrangements in which uh, some element goes into its uh, natural position uh, is uh, given by the sum of uh, or the, the by the principle of uh, uh, inclusion and exclusion we can have n c1 c2 etc c n bar that is no element goes into its natural position as given by first we uh, sum nc1 plus nc2 plus nc3 plus etc and uh, that, that sum is nc1 into n minus 1 factorial and uh, that is uh, n minus 
n is the total number of arrangements n minus then plus n c 2 into n minus 2 factorial then again minus n c 3 smaller than n c 3 n minus 3 factorial plus etc the last time being minus 1 raised to k into uh, minus 1 raised to n into uh, n c n uh, n minus n uh, factorial and this is equal to then the total number of arrangements in n distinct symbols is n factorial n factorial into uh, minus uh, nc1 is n factorial divided by 1 factorial into n minus 1 factorial into uh, okay here also we have an n minus 1 factorial then plus nc2 is n factorial divided by 2 factorial into n minus 2 factorial into n minus 2 factorial um, minus here also n factorial divided by n minus 3 factorial into 3 factorial into n minus 3 factorial plus etc. And this is equal to n factorial minus here this n minus 1 factorial get cancelled and what we have is n factorial uh, then here plus n factorial uh, divided by 2 factorial so here it is n factorial divided by 2 factorial uh, then minus n factorial divided by 3 factorial plus etc and this term this is equal to if we take this n factorial as a common factor then the remaining uh, terms can be written as 1 minus uh, 1 by 1 factorial plus uh, 1 by 2 factorial plus 1 by 3 factorial plus etc and uh, this is equal to n factorial into uh, summation k varies from 0 to uh, n 1 by k factorial here it is uh, the signs are alternating so it is minus 1 raised to k by k factorial so that is the number of uh, d arrangements or the number of uh, arrangements in which no letter is going into its uh, natural uh, position and uh, if you take the limiting case as n tends to infinity uh, or if uh, n is very large then this uh, dn is uh, equal to n factorial into e raised to minus 1. So this sum is nothing but e raised to minus 1 and therefore dn is equal to n factorial, uh, n factorial into e raised to minus 1 for uh, large values of um, n. So if n is equal to 10, 20 or 30 or 40 or uh, this e raised to my uh, n factorial is a rapidly increasing function. So um, for sufficiently large values of n, uh, this can be done. Okay. So here, if you look at uh, our particular problem, then how many uh, one to one functions of f have at least one fixed point? So if you count the d arrangements, then the term D7 gives the number of cases in which we don't have any fixed points and that is given by 7 factorial into um, so e raised to minus 1 give uh, an approximation and the actual value is uh, 7 factorial into summation uh, k varies from 0 to 7 minus 1 raised to k by uh, k factorial that is uh, 1 minus 1 plus 1 by 2 factorial minus 1 by 3 factorial plus 1 by 4 factorial minus 1 by 5 factorial etc up to uh, 1 by 7 factorial this is d7 and if you look at the number of cases in which uh, we have at least one fixed point is uh, the total number of arrangements 
that is um, n factorial okay n minus n c1 c2 etc cn bar and that is equal to n factorial minus uh, d7 this will give the uh, required answer so the answer uh, in uh, simplest form we can write it as n factorial minus d7 okay so that is how we uh, find out the solution of this particular uh, problem and now another one in how many ways mr ford distribute uh, 10 distinct books to 10 uh, children so that uh, each of uh, 10 children have uh, at least one book or exactly one book because number of books are equal to number of children then uh, each children get one book, each child get one book and then we collect uh, the books back and uh, re uh, redistribute uh, the book to the same set of uh, children so that um, okay uh, so that each child has the opportunity to pursue two different books so in the second distribution so the first distribution is very simple he distribute 10 books to 10 positions so on that and uh, that can be done in uh, n factorial or in this case 10 factorial ways so the 10 factorial is the number of ways in which we can distribute 10 uh, distinct books to 10 uh, children now when we collect the books back and uh, redistribute them into the uh, community of uh, 10 uh, students or 10 children we have to make sure that uh, the same child or the a child a particular child uh, get a different book in our second uh, distribution so if we name the books or number the books when we uh, take them back as 1, 2, 3, up to 10, then we have to uh, redistribute the books among the children in such a way that no books goes into its previous position. So we are, we are looking for, what we are looking for is the number of D arrangements uh, in uh, 10 positions. So that can be done in uh, D 10 ways or the 10 ways and that's equal to 10 factorial into uh, e raised to minus 1 is a good approximation or if we looking for the exact answer this is uh, 10 factorial into sigma k varies from 0 to 10 1 minus 1 raised to k divided by k factorial and uh, this 10 factorial into e raised to minus 1 will give an exact answer. Anyway, anyway the first, first distribution can be done in uh, 10 different ways. So, the total uh, number of ways in which uh, uh, Ford, Mr. Ford uh, can distribute the books is equal to the first step he can make it in 10 factorial ways and in the, the second step he, he can made it in 10 factorial into e raised to minus 1 ways and in total he can do it in uh, 10 factorial the square into e raised to minus 1 different ways and e raised to minus 1 is a good approximation here so no need to calculate uh, the summation for k is equal to 0 to 10 minus 1 raised to k by k factorial. If you are going to use a calculator, this calculation is uh, not so simple. And if you are going to use uh, some laptops or program languages, then this is not uh, a tedious task. Just write down a code and um, evaluate the sum. That is, uh, can be really simple. But in uh, exam point of view, uh, it's very easy to calculate uh, 10 factorial the square 
into e raised to minus 1. So that's the uh, number of ways in which we uh, this uh, 10 books can be distributed 2 times into uh, 2 uh, times into uh, 10 uh, children in such a way that each student or each uh, child get the opportunity to uh, read two different uh, books. So that is uh, about the principle of uh, inclusion and exclusion. And uh, thank you.